Hello guys, this is Peter from Builder Boeing and um, this is my new made overhead panel. Uh, it's a complete overhead that is made by me, not that I've, of course I've assembled the different panels, but I've actually also made the panels myself. Um, I'd like to show you what I've done. Uh, the total cost of the panels here is somewhat, something like $50, 30, 40 euros, quite cheap. Um, because this is not engraved panel, this is actually just a sticker mounted on a plate. Let me show you what, I, what I'm talking about. Uh, well, before I show you, actually, um, uh, it started with, I just wanted a few switches for like uh, starting the engine, turning on the, the landing lights. Um, want to control different parts of the, of the aircraft. So I started drawing these switches in uh, Adobe Illustrator and um, before I knew it I was on my way to drawing a, com a complete overhead so I thought why not and I just draw everything you see here in Illustrator and of course uh, you can download the file from my blog um, as either PDF file or um, Adobe Illustrator file. So I printed uh, the whole thing and um, then I cut each panel out from uh, from the print and uh, mounted it. So it's it's all printed on a sticker uh, and then mounted on plates, as you might be able to see. Um, I don't know how how much detail you can see here. This is your damper, as you can see. It's not engraved into the panel. It's actually there's no. Um, there's no difference here in in, uh, in, in levels of variation. It, it's just you might be able to see there. It's just one smooth surface, right? And these as well. You know, shaders. Uh, but as I said, I printed each panel um, and then mounted them. So you can see here is a gap between the panels. There's a gap. And down here as well, you can see the gap here and here and here. Don't mind these uh, brass looking screws right now. I'm uh, planning on changing them next week to gray ones like these. Um, more on that later, you can see that why on the, on the back side. Okay, um, so I made the panels, draw them uh, in Adobe Illustrator. And then uh, on each panel here, I made an extra centimeter of, um, of marking. Uh, or border uh, around each panel. And then I printed it on a very large sticker and that cost me those 40 euros, 50 dollars for this entire print, uh, including some extra things I'll show you later on. And so um, I cut each part, each panel out and mounted them on Fomalux. And now so many people have asked me what is Fomalux? Foam Alux. Um, it's quite difficult to explain, uh, I guess, but I have uh, I have a plate of Foam Alux right here. You can see it there. It just says Malux. Foam Alux. And it is some white hard pressed foam. This is half a centimeter. Okay. And I have a small piece over here. It, however, this is quite difficult because I need to hold my, uh, my iPhone while recording this. But you can cut it very easily with a knife like this. Let's see if I can just, if I press here, yeah, you can see it just goes right through. Okay, so you can cut it in any size you want uh, using a knife. So it's a very easy material to work with. Okay, so what I've done is each panel um, has been printed and the one I'd like to show you, I laid right here, oh, sorry, that's over here. So I printed each panel and then, as you can see here, the it's printed on a, there, right, in focus. This is the sticker, it's printed on white sticker material and um, then wrapped around this plate of Fomalux. Okay, so it's just wrapped around here. And this one goes, as an example, this one goes up here later on, right. So that's what I've done, and you can see here I have other panels. Uh, this is for the main instrument panel. And as well, you can see here, it's just been wrapped. If you focus, sorry, I just need to hold my phone differently. Sorry about that. Uh, there, 
No. Let's see. There, you might be able to see how I've just wrapped it around the plate. Okay, you can see that. The same goes over here. This one actually wasn't bended very well. You can see there's a bit of of sticker sticking out there. Just cut that with a knife, right? Okay. Um, good thing about the solution is it's very cheap and it's very quick. Um, bad thing is that the sticker material itself is quite thick so um, even though I've cut holes here for annunciators, you will see it on the back side shortly uh, two LEDs are not able to light this up very good so it's just dim when they're on um, I might end up actually buying annunciators from open cockpits for the entire overhead instead but for now they will light up but only be dim when they're lit Okay. This is extra gauges, um, but as you can see, that this one I want to show you here is reflective. The foil or sticker material is ref reflective, and so they've had a few layers of um, a finish or a varnish mat, of course, so that um, when I take a panel here, you can see there is no reflection at all. Okay. Furthermore. Um, when you download the file from uh, my website, you get, of course, the entire panel and then an extra set of all annunciators and all gauges. Um, my idea was to, with, like I've done with this one, you can see this. Actually, this is glued on. See if we can focus. There, well, almost. You can see this annunciator is glued on a piece of plexiglass. Um, it's going to take me too long to do all of them and uh, the result isn't very good but they are included uh, in the file and if you want to do it like this you just as well as everything else just cut a piece of plexiglass in a matching size that's half an inch and one inch on the other, uh, on the other side and then you wrap the annunciator around it and uh, there you have your annunciator on the file you download, this will should this part, the annunciators, not the entire panel, only the annunciators should be printed on transparent foil that will uh, allow the LEDs to light through so that you will actually be able to see it light up. All right. And uh, as I showed you um, this, I showed you this piece before, um, and this on the left is the fuel temperature and. Um, Actually, it's another one. It's the the cabin temperature up there, right? And you can see you can actually see a bit of color difference here, and that's due to the matte finish varnish that I've uh, sprayed on. But um, there are two uh, of each gauge in the file, and I like to show you down here on the uh, APU why that is. Because I've cut the one that's on the plate here. I've cut that one out, just um, thrown it away. And then, as you can see here. I have put an extra layer of foam elapse behind the original panel. Uh, don't mind those scratches. Um, and then here is the second gauge. So that's actually one centimeter into the panel right now. So I can put an arm here that's going to work as a gauge. Mm. And then put plexiglass on, on the outside here. Um, and perhaps paint it a bit. So it will actually look like it actually looks like, look like a real gauge. Um, I have high hopes for this solution. Of course, um, many switches, buttons, that's uh, working. And uh, this one was quite expensive. It's like $5 for a switch, but that's one of those switches that is uh, on, off, and then momentary on when you push it down. Last thing I like to show you here is um, is the coloring. Uh, the shade of grey on these panels, of course, depend on your printer um, and how much uh, you're gonna give it of, of the matte finish afterwards. Um, but let me show you here. Here I have a Hispa panels EFIS unit. Um, as you might be able to see this. My, it's a bit more reddish, perhaps in color. This is a Prosim parts. 
again. Go up here. Let's see, it's not exactly a true match of the of the Rail 7011, but somewhat close. And this is a open cockpit. Well, no, as I said, not an, ex an exact match, but close enough for me. If you download the Illustrator file, you can just uh, adjust the switches for um, for what you think is right. Okay, I'm going to turn the complete overhead around and show you the back side. Um, okay, this is the back side of the of the overhead panel. As you can see right now, I've made a wooden frame. It's uh, quite heavy, so I'll um, try and switch it out with aluminium T frames uh, next week. Uh, small light frames is like two times two centimeters, about an inch times one inch time one inch and one inch on each side. Um, hopefully to get some weight off because right now it's very heavy, and I'm afraid to uh, to mount it in the roof. Um, I'm afraid it's gonna fall down. Right. Okay. So this is um, the the back side, and uh, here is the fuel panel. Um, this is the um, let's see generators panel I think uh, over here we have the um, cabin altitude panel um, yeah I forgot the name of that one sorry anyway let's see here on the fuel panel you can see I've actually made an annunciators also this is made from Fomalux I've just glued Fomalux on uh, the wiring is a bit messy right now, but you can see all switches are wired up. This is an, a complete panel um, that should be working. Oh, it is working, but uh, I mentioned the problems with the um, the annunciators before, but they actually work. Right now, it's interfaced using only one Pokies 56U card there, so I have 56 inputs that's working. Uh, the downside of this card compared to open cockpits is that um, I don't. Well, the Pokies card here can actually handle uh, LEDs, but only one at a time. And each of my annunciators, like over here, uses two LEDs, five volt total. And this card only uh, supplies 3.5 volts. So, um, no outputs for now. I'm gonna buy some open cockpit cards later on, I think, to interface. Face it with. These are, however, the pokies are so easy to work with um, that I'm, it saddens me a bit that I can't use them for um, for the entire overhead. That's going to be a costly affair if I do that. And down here, um, I need to build the frame here uh, for the lights panel. But I have another video on uh, on my blog for this piece, which is the starter panel. I've actually made it so that the, um, the starter switch return automatically to off when you um, turn the engines on. I just, if you can see just behind, um, let's see if I can point it there. You can see a shadow behind that small black bar um, or stripe. You can see a shadow. Uh, it's moving now when I turn the switch. You see that it's moving. So what it is, I'd just like to show shortly, you can watch the other video on my blog to get a, to get a more detailed look. There we are. Um, the black thing you see, let's see if I can remove this so that it's a bit easier. There. The black thing you see is the um, rotary switch, uh, the black shaft of the rotary switch. And then I've drilled a hole through um, and installed a smaller shaft, uh, two millimeters, three millimeters, I think. You can see here what happens. So when I turn this switch, this moves along. And so watch the video for all the details of how, how, how I've made it. But uh, you can see it here as well. When I turn this starter switch, watch just next to the number two, you can see it move now. There we are. Now it's just under the number one. And then when the engine is turned on, this moves due to a servo engine that's placed here. The so engine moves a part here on the back that click is clicking the entire switch back to uh, to a vertical position. Very cheap, very simple, very effective. Right. 
So that was um, my idea of how to make a cheap and easy overhead. Thanks for watching. This is Peter from Builder Boeing.